Welcome back to MacBook Studio. We're in the studio talking about the new features in Final Cut Pro 10.2, Motion 5.2, and Compressor 4.2. <laughs> so uh, all of these new features and enhancements. Um, in the past weeks, we looked at 3D text and Final Cut. Now we're going to look at 3D text or titles in Motion and some of the things you yes. can do specifically in Motion that you can't do in Final Cut Pro 10. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Motion takes everything in Final Cut, which is deep. You know, everything has been published to Final Cut from Motion. I mean, they're, they're sort of built in Motion, but there's because Motion is a 3D environment, you can do more things. So what I want to talk about today is how to set up your text in a 3D environment in Motion. Okay, so we're going to start out. Let's dive right in. I've got some text that is not 3D. This is a lie. That 3D text is 2D text right now. But I'm going to make it 3D text. I'm going to go to the inspector and to the text inspector, and everything's almost exactly the same as in Final Cut, except here we have this thing called an Appearance tab. It used to be called the Style tab before, five, uh, before this version of Motion. Now it's called the Appearance tab, and it has all these same 3D text features that don't appear right away, but as soon as I click the 3D text button, I now have 3D text. I'll increase the depth a little bit, and really to be able to see it better, I'm going to add a camera by clicking the camera icon and switching to 3D. And then I'll orbit the camera. You can see there's our beautiful 3D text. My nice white plasticky text. Yes, yes. So let's change that too, just to make it a little bit different. I'll go ahead and apply one of these presets. And I'm, I'm really partial to this red car, car, car paint. paint. Yeah, yes. it's pretty. Candy apple looks, red. Yeah, look, we can see how it's reflecting that environment. And we know about changing environments, which I'm not going to do here. But now that's a beautiful 3D text. But it's great. We can animate it with all the animation tools in motion. But I'm talking about how can we put it in a 3D scene. So to do that, I'm going to add a floor to this scene. So I'm going to go to the library. You like to add floors a lot. What? Yeah, floors in your project. Floors, I do. Yeah, <laughs> I like to add floors. Floors make a big difference. So I'm going to go to our generators and I'm going to grab a color solid and I'm going to put it into my project. And the key here is I'm going to put it below my 3D text because even though these are both 3D text layers, you actually, when you're dealing with 3D text, you have to care about layer order, which you normally don't have to do. But with 3D text, you do have to care about it. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to hold the shift key down and rotate it down 90 degrees to lay it flat. So now I have a floor. And if I tilt the whole thing, we can see our 3D text now sits on a floor, right? right. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make the floor a little bigger by grabbing an edge and holding Shift and Option and dragging. So that's kind of nice, uh, but it's lacking a little bit. So yeah, what we can pop. do doesn't really pop. So what we can do is I'll, well, that floor is still selected. I'm going to go to the inspector for the properties inspector and enable reflections. Ooh, yeah, that's now, instant. Wow. So it's a little better yeah. right away. I'm going to show the reflection properties and enable the fall off because it's a little too reflective yeah. for my taste. And I'll even open that up and change the edge distance. So it's not quite so reflective. But there we have a beautiful reflective Can you change the thing floor to white or something? Yeah, so let's, let's, well, the floor is sticking out its own, so let's yeah. match the floor to the background. I'll go yeah. to the generator tab, and I'm going to make the floor black. Ah. Could also make them both white, because mm -hmm. you can always make your background any color by selecting the project and going to the project properties. There's our project background color, so I right. could make the project white, uh, but I'm not going to do that here. So now what I want to do is a little bit more. So check this out. We've got this nice 3D reflection. Of course, we can animate the camera. We can animate the text. It looks fabulous. But if we go back to the text inspector to the appearance pane, there's this lighting section that's identical to what you yeah, see in, in it looks Final, just like Final Cut, right? Yeah. Exactly. So we have environments. We have these different lighting setups. The thing about these lighting setups is they're fixed. You know, you choose one, and it you is what it like is. It. You hope you like it. Yeah. And there's a lot of options. And by mixing, changing the intensity or changing the environment, you can modify them. Mm -hmm. But you can't actually manipulate the lights directly in any way. But in motion, check this out. What I'm going to do is take, notice these names, standard, medium center, medium left, medium right, et cetera, right? I'm going to turn these off. And you might wonder, wait a minute, Mark, you turn the lights off, why do we still see the text? Because they're still an environment. Yeah, they're still an environment reflecting it. So I'm going to uncheck the environment as well, and now the light it disappears. Void. So now check this out. This is brand new. Under the object menu, we've always had the ability to add lights, but now we have something called new light setup. Oh, that's brand new. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. And look at these. These are the same light setups that are built into the text inspector. Ah. Isn't that cool? Hmm, but, interesting. But these are the mo these are motion lights. Right. So, well, I guess they're both motion lights, but these are manipulatable lights. Let's say that. So if I check select standard, look what shows up here. We've got a key light, a fill left, and a fill light. Those same lights. I mean, fill right. Sorry, whatever, I, whatever, whatever it says right, right there. Don't listen to my words. Um, <laughs> so we've got these lights that are built in now that are lighting up the text, but we can manipulate these lights. 
So I'm going to select the key center and you may notice shadows is enabled for this. We don't really see them. These are directional lights by default, which means they need to point right at the object to light them. For the purposes of what we're doing here to see how they work, I'm going to change this to a point light. And I'm also going to increase the intensity quite a bit. Nice. Because what I want you to see is if I take that point light and move it around a little bit, we can see that it's casting shadows on the floor. Behind it. Yeah. Behind it. Okay. Oh, oh, look at that. Look at that. That's yeah, isn't that beautiful? beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. And I've, I've got it a little too intense right there. But you can move this point light or make it a spotlight or use a directional light. Move it wherever you want. And I and bet you got, can animate the lights. Absolutely. You can animate the lights, of course. And you've got a beautiful setup here. Let me select the text so it writes around the text where we have both reflections and shadows enabled on our scene. You can build some Down incredible 3D titles with these tools. Absolutely. So by this is the starting point. We go a lot deeper in our, in our motion training on this, but that gives you the basic idea of how to set up a floor and basically an infinite background and have reflections and have lights that cast shadows that you can then begin to work with as you animate your text. Right. So you're, you're going to just stop there? I'm going to stop there. Yeah, ah. I think that's, I built the environment. My goal was to build an environment and I did it. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Well, so you can see Motion offers a lot more capability than Final Cut Pro and you can pretty much design anything you want now. Right. And we'll go more into these subjects over the next few weeks to talk more about different things you can do in Motion with 3D text. Excellent. You want to check out Mark's new tutorial, as he mentioned, on uh, creating 3D titles in Motion. It, he goes into a lot of depth. You definitely want to check that out. Uh, follow us on Twitter and Facebook. And thanks for watching another episode of MacBridge Studio. See you next time.